Well, this cat knows what a PPSH is for. It's for resting your head on while you're sleeping in front of the fire. I've been doing a little bit more work out in the uh, garage past couple of days and uh, today I thought it's about time let's see am I, have I got this in view yeah sort of in view um, I thought it was about time to put a little bit of uh, bluing on it and uh, for people who don't know how I blue these things um, it's basically uh, what some people call oil dunking use old engine oil and um, a blowtorch and uh, you can heat it all up and dunk the whole piece of metal into uh, into an oil bath now old engine oil is what I use um, so it's uh, it's what I've drained out of the car over a few years of oil changes uh, now the other way is you heat the thing up on some bricks and uh, the way I quite often do it for large items like this um, I then get a old horsehair paintbrush well whatever hair it's got on the brush doesn't really matter and nylon doesn't tend to be very good because it tends to melt quite easily um, so um, you know we'll say horsehair now uh, basically uh, use it like uh, like you would for a paintbrush um, dip the brush in the oil and apply it if you want to see me doing it, um, go and have a look at the videos I did for like the MG42 when I was working making one of those up. Uh, other things I've done is I've put the ejector um, or ejector port slot in the top. I've still got to make a sight for the back here. Um, that's going to be uh, maybe riveted or just welded on. Probably end up welding it on. Uh, yeah, I've done the little um, point here for the sling to go on. Now, the span between here, I think I've made it about two centimetres. I've made it fractionally wider than the original one. Uh, this is uh, the original. Now, the belt which goes on these things is 1.8 centimeters wide now I've made mine so it'll handle a 2 centimeter wide belt um, it's starting to look a little bit uh, better now um, yeah now I've still got to do the front sight for it but that's that shouldn't be too hard to do um, let's see what else have we got I've also done a bit of bluing on the uh, barrel tube which I've made for it and you can see I've slid the brass barrel inside there um, here I've left the rear end of the uh, airsoft barrel as you would expect it to be there's that little line along the bottom there, the little slot um, large slot where the booking uh, the hop booking goes into and these two little grip points here so I might be able to use those yes I haven't decided now basically um, what I've done is in the front here if you can see in through the hole if I can get that yeah I've, I've welded a, a disc in the front and you can possibly see one of the welds welds just in in there just welded it on two sides one weld there and there and one weld on that side basically you can get the MIG welder torch in through these large holes um, yeah this front part as a matter of interest this front part is actually what you would call the muzzle brake area of the uh, of the muzzle jacket or the barrel jacket um, the reason there's no hole in the bottom is um, basically this is the muzzle brake area it stops the barrel climbing so uh, what it does is uh, it allows gas to vent sideways 
and vertically but not downwards. If it vented downwards but not upwards it would cause the barrel to climb. So in order to stop the gun uh, barrel from rising when it's on full auto or when it's firing at all um, they put an upward discharge there and uh, that might also be why they have this weird shaping to the front of the barrel that possibly aids the um, barrel correction in that it forces more discharge upwards it's quite a clever idea um, Russians, World War II they, they sort of knew what they were doing uh, just like they did with the T-34 tank really there are a lot of under, underrated gear now um, what I've done, that hole at the front I've made it slightly smaller than the diameter of the pipe was now this here is then, I've then turned it down about half a millimeter so a millimeter all over, um, on, across its diameter um, yeah, and half a millimeter all the way around so that basically drops in now we have a larger hole here and what I've done um, at this point there is I've just got a piece of round bar and I've drilled a hole through it and tapped it with um, an M6 uh, tap in there. Now this isn't the way the real one's done but um, I'm not going to um, split hairs, I'm not going to worry about the way the real one's done, I'm going to do it how I want to do it um, and say so what the hell you know uh, it's good enough for me so basically the barrel then slides inside and should be able to guide it up into that hole at the front there if I can just get that to go in I've made it a fairly tight fit Right, there we are. I've just managed to slide it in. Uh, you should be able to see the front of the barrel just sticking through in that area there. So that's just about uh, just about the same, I think, as the real one would look. If I, if I get the real one, um, yeah. So that's how that looks in there. And that's how my one looks there. Yeah. So we're uh, starting to get there. I might make a sight for the front tomorrow. Not sure. Now. Right. So. I'm further down the gun. This area here. As I said previous. Is the ejection uh, port. Now the original one. You can see the top of the bolt there. I believe these bolts were possibly chrome plated um, not sure about that, I think I've seen somewhere on the web that they chrome plated the bolt for some reason obviously it made it uh, move easier and uh, possibly stopped the thing rusting don't know now uh, what that little bit, bit there is for, uh, for I don't really know I'll probably um, weld one onto the top of it when, uh, when I get around to it um, now, where am I up to now? Oh yeah, still got to do the sight for the back. Now this slot here, it's uh, I think it was five centimeters long and one and a half centimeters wide for anyone who's after uh, measurements for these things. Um, my slots on the top there don't seem quite wide as they should be, but I can always open them up a bit more. I'm not over worried. Um, right, next thing. I've made the, well, you saw in the last video, I was making the um, magwell area. Now, remember me saying that the way the magwell was made was it was a, an outer casing of uh, about 1 1.5, 1 1.75 millimeter steel 
um, which remember me cutting a piece of cardboard out as a template. Then um, what it's got is this three millimeter thick steel uh, to give it a bit of reinforcing. Now uh, this is basically uh, plug welded. Drill a number of holes around on the outer bodywork there. Um, it's not particularly well ground off. I may redo this and blow it again, but that's not really a problem. Um, so you you drill the holes in and then weld it through. What I've done is I've drilled five millimeter holes. Uh, one there, so it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six holes, and I've done that on both sides. Six holes, and then ground them back.